call from Yo-Yo Ma, God, almost five years ago, and he wanted to talk about maybe shooting a live project. And I flew out to meet him. He lived in Boston. And we had this incredible evening where we talked about life and philosophy and we told jokes. And, uh, and by the end of that night, basically, I said, I'll follow you with a camera anywhere. Like, I was so utterly charmed by him, but also by his ideas. I mean, this kind of journey he's been on as an artist. And in a way, the Silk Road Project has been the, this manifestation of his artistic journey. And so I didn't know what the film was going to be, but I knew I wanted to find out. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I mean, what I think Yo-Yo, what happened to him is, you know, he was he had a midlife crisis in his 30s. Maybe because he'd been famous since he was seven, that it's, it happened early. But he had this moment where he said, do I even want to be a musician? You know, I know I'm good at it and people pay me to do it, but I never chose this. And so the answer he came to was, I want to be a musician if I can do something more with it than just music. I want to see how music can help us understand the world and help us um, maybe change the world. So a group of musicians getting together and seeing what might happen when strangers meet. We scoured from Venice to Istanbul, Central Asia, China, and Mongolia, looking for incredible talent. This is like a global tapestry full of big ideas, but how do you make that concrete? And so we ended up concentrating on Yo-Yo, but a few other musicians as well who collaborate with Yo-Yo. You know, this amazing pipa player from China, a musician from Iran, one from Syria, and one from Spain. And through them, and seeing kind of the this, the battles and the sacrifices that artists in these other cultures make, it hopefully reminds us in the West of what the stakes are to be an artist. In other words, that culture in those places, in these countries have had cultural revolutions. It's not called that by accident. It's because culture, in fact, is how you can control people. If you erase their culture, that's how you can subjugate them because culture is how we identify who we are. So it's our commonality. So it's very potent that way. And I feel like in the West, particularly in America, we take it for granted. You know, we think it's like frosting. It's like, tastes good, but it's not nutritious. You know, it's got empty calories. To me, it's, you know, it's foundational. It's like the plate that the cake sits on, you know, not the frosting. Since I left Syria, I found myself experiencing emotions far more complex. Like, can a piece of music stop a bullet? In 1966, Cultural Revolution, my parents asked me to learn music to escape. In Iran, the revolution, chaos. I had to leave. By trying to kill the human spirit, the answer of the human spirit is to revenge with beauty. You know, the process of making a film, when we started the film, the Syrian character, Kinan Azme, hadn't even joined the Silk Road Ensemble. And as we were making the film, he went on this journey as the revolution broke out in Syria in, I believe, May, uh, March 2012, where he had this real crisis of trying to be a musician when his whole home country was being devastated. Uh, And he felt like the music somehow didn't have a place when people were being killed and people were, um, you know, just trying to survive. So we ended up, and I never predicted this, but we ended up going all the way to a, a refugee camp in Jordan with him uh, to go back. And, and what you realize is people, refugees, have not only lost their homes, but they've lost their home cultures too. And so if you can bring back something that connects them to their home and connects them to each other, you see the kind of joy they have receiving that. And it helps you understand how important that is. Uh, again, it's not just, um, you know, money and food and shelter they need, but, you know, it's a sense of home. I mean, home becomes the big theme for this whole this whole film. So Wuman and Kavork, two people in our film, actually went with the film to Zadari last week to screen it, and they said it was an amazing experience, and then it became, after the film, they all ended up having a kind of spontaneous jam, <laughs> I guess, uh, which is great, which is the whole idea, you know, and, you know, Wu Man, who's a Chinese pipa player, um, you know, playing with musicians in a refugee camp in Jordan, like, that's that's exactly what this should be about. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to do more of that. 
And I think in a way, you know, this is not like, um, you know, it's not like you ever finish this kind of work. You know, I don't think Yo-Yo Ma ever sees the Silk Road project as like, okay, I checked that box, you know, solved. <laughs> you know, it's, this is like a long, um, a long pushing of a rock up a hill and you may never get to the top, but, um, but Yo-Yo does it with such conviction. And as he says, with such love that there's kind of no room to entertain failure. This was like the Manhattan Project of music. No one knew what was going to happen. I knew there was going to be naysayers. You're taking this traditional music, mixing it together and diluting these traditions. I mean, as somebody that makes films about music and art and culture, I feel like it's the same kind of questions I've been asking all the time. You know, these questions of what's the value of culture? You know, what can it do? And I've come to really see culture as... And, as something that's essential to who we are. I mean, this is something Yo-Yo has been fighting for all the time, but the, the whole Silk Road project is a way of us really exploring how culture makes us interact and identify and connect with other people. Yeah, at a time where there's so much intolerance around, particularly in our politics, um, and so much talk of building walls, this is all about building bridges. Uh, and that's kind of what music does. It's what film does. It creates empathy. I think this has been kind of a big journey to kind of understand other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you go in with ideas, but ultimately you understand that you're kind of jumping off a cliff and hoping that you're going to catch an updraft because you really don't know. And then you end up going into the edit with a bunch of puzzle pieces that are, don't fit and you have to somehow make them make a nice picture. Um, so it is really tough. Um, I mean, I've been doing it long enough now where I'm a little less scared when I take that step, the first step. You know, there has to be something I grab onto and identify with, a character or a big idea or a story. Uh, I'm a music geek, for one, and a musician, second. Um, so I always loved, um, just loved music. Um, and I'd started making films and working as a journalist originally, um, doing more with politics and, uh, but I realized, why don't I actually try making, <laughs> try making a music documentary? And I loved it, but the thing I loved about it is not only did I get to kind of indulge my musical self, but that, but that music is an amazing tool as a filmmaker. You know, it's, it's a Trojan horse, you know, it's a way to take, bring an audience in with all this, these amazing emotions and history and everything else we have with the music. Um, but then you can tell whatever story you want, you know, and I think the best music documentaries are not just about music. They're about something else. If music becomes the language you um, use to look at the world or to ex tell a story. So, um, so it's great. I mean, I, it's a privilege. And when you get to have amazing music in your movie, uh, mm -hmm. it's, you know, that, that's, you just feel like you're cheating. <laughs> Everybody is afraid, but you make a connection to another human being. You can turn fear into joy.